Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a new feature that's found in the current beta version of Photoshop. That's Photoshop version 26.0.0. This new feature is called Remove Distractions, and with it, you could remove wires and cables and people. If you're not familiar with the beta version of Photoshop, it is, of course, a version of Photoshop that is not yet ready for full release. But often in this beta version of Photoshop are some new features such as remove distractions. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can download the beta version of Photoshop. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. Now we're going to start out by removing wires and cables, more specifically these power lines. I'd like to remove them from this image. This new feature that is called Remove Distractions is part of the Remove tool. Remove tool is a relatively new tool in Photoshop. It's right here. Keyboard shortcut is J, but you can see that that keyboard shortcut is shared by a number of different tools. So make sure you're using the actual Remove tool. It's a little band-aid with a couple stars next to it. Now, before I do any work on my images in Photoshop, I like to do my work uh, on its own layer. Often, I'll just go down here and click on a new layer, or I'll just duplicate the background layer. Let's duplicate the background layer by hitting Command-J on a Mac, Control-J on a PC. Now, with this tool active, you'll notice at the top there's a button, Find Distractions. And with that button, you could find wires and cables, and that's a one-click removal. I'll click on that, and it will automatically find the cables and remove them. You also could remove people. Now, that is editable, so if it finds a person that you don't want removed, you could edit it so it won't remove that person. Or if it didn't find a person that you do want removed, you could edit it so it will remove that person. Now, some other settings here are is uh, if we go across the right, you know, to the right, we have mode. Uh, by default, it will be in auto. In auto mode, it may use generative AI. Uh, you could always use generative AI or you could never use generative AI. I'll leave it in the auto mode. Then we could sample all layers. I'll demo that in a minute. Because I'm on a duplicate layer, I do not have to have that chucked. And then the way the tool works, if you're just using the tool by itself, you're not use, doing fine distractions, uh, you would uh, you could have the option to remove after each stroke or wait to the end. There'll be a check mark here you could check. But we're not using the tool by itself. We're using this function of the tool, find distractions. And we'll do that right now. So on our duplicate layer, we'll go to find distractions. We'll go to wires and cables. This is one-click removal. We'll click on it. You'll see immediately you get this box. It says removing area. And you'll notice that it has like a progress bar. And what will happen is the progress bar will move relatively quickly for maybe like, you know, I don't know, sixth of the length of the bar. Then it will sit there a long time. For all the images I've tried this on, it sits there over a minute. And then all at once it will go whoop and go full. And then it will sit there another five to 10 seconds. And then it will actually remove the cables. So I'm not going to make you sit here for over a minute and listen to me blab, blabber. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when this progress bar is all the way across. Okay, the bar just went across. So another five or 10 seconds. And then you'll notice that it will remove the cables perfectly. I've tried this on a number of images and it always works. Um, sometimes you have to edit it a little bit, but Overall, it works very well. It's just relatively slow in this current beta version of Photoshop. Hopefully, when it is ready for full release, it works a lot faster. But you can see it did a good job. I also have this image. The cables here, or the power lines here, are a little more obnoxious. And there's a little more maybe complex background behind at least this cable and this cable. How does it do on something like this? Well, let's see. Now, instead of duplicating the background layer, this time I'm just going to show you. I'm going to put a new layer there. I'm going to do my work on this new layer because there's no pixels on this new layer i got to make sure that sample all layers is checked so we'll actually look to the layer below to find the cables so we could remove them we're going to go to find distractions and we're going to again go to wires and cables and again this is going to take over a minute uh, but it will find the cables and i've done this image now a couple times and there's sometimes just a little flaw that we'll have to fix and i'll show you that in a moment so again pause the video i'll start the video up again when we have this progress bar all the way across okay the bar just went across another five ten seconds you'll see that it will remove all five of these cables and it did a pretty good job um 
every now and then uh, you might find that it will have a little flaw in it. Um, for example, let's say it left a gap in the clouds. Well, you could use the clone stamp tool to fix that. The keyboard shortcut for the clone stamp tool is the S key. It's this tool right here. Just make sure you're in normal mode with 100% opacity. Opacity. The way this tool works is you would first get a sample area. By doing that, to do that, you would hold in the alter option key. You'll get this little bullseye. Click once. Then you could come in and you could then paint. But again, you have to make sure that you're on current and below or all layers or it won't work. And then you could come in and do it. Right. So because I have this blank layer up here, that's why we're doing that. All right, so you can come in and fix any flaws with the clone stamp tool. That's the tool you would most often use. Now, what about remove people? Well, that doesn't work as well. And it's faster though, but it doesn't work as well. For example, I have these two guys here. I'd like to get them out of this lousy street photo I took. All right, so again, we're going to go to the remove tool. Uh, we're going to duplicate the background layer by hitting Command J on my Mac. All right. Then we're going to go up here. We're going to find distractions. Now, people, this is ed editable. So we'll click here, and what it will do is it will find the people first. This is a lot faster, and you can see it's done already, but it couldn't find any people who are not the subject of the image. These two guys are the subject of the image, so it's not going to select them. This will look for people who don't belong in the scene. For example, I have this photo of this carriage I took at one of the Smithsonian Museums in Washington. There's a couple people here that are like in the scene. I really don't want them there, right? So we're going to get rid of those people. I'm going to duplicate the background layer again by hitting Command-J on my Mac, Control-J on a PC. We're going to go to Find Distractions. We're going to go to Peep. Now it will find the people, and it will allow you to edit it. So it didn't automatically remove the people like it did the wires and cables. Now in this case... It found this lady, but it also like has taken out her shadow here, but her shadow is kind of mingled in with the shadow of the carriage. So I may not want that like modified at all. I want that shadow to be kind of pure. So what I'll do is since I'm it's you're still on this tool, you can just go to the minus brush, then you could use the bracket keys to change the size of the brush. The right bracket key will make the brush larger, left bracket key smaller. And then I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna remove the selection. From right around there, I'll leave it on her legs. You know, that's fine. Even though she's, you can see her shadow a tiny bit there, I don't care. So we'll do this and we'll click the check mark. Now, one thing before I do that I want to make you aware of. If you look at this carriage right here, notice this part of the, whatever it is here, is overlapping her back. It's going to wipe that away. Uh, let me show you. Let me just click the check mark. It'll take that out too. And unfortunately, this isn't like generative AI where it gives you three variations to choose from. It's just going to give you this one variation and you're kind of stuck with it unless you undo it and try it again. Um, but typically, every time I've tried this, it takes that away too. So hopefully this is something that they improve down the line uh, so that it could actually find, in this case, the carriage, know where the carriage is ends and where the woman begins and it will properly remove the person and not the object that you you know is over or in front of that person now here's this shot um i like this shot but i have all these people in here i like to remove all the people well the way this works is it's going to consider the people in the foreground like the subject of the image so it's not going to find them but it will find the people back here uh, let me show you we're just going to go to, well, let me duplicate the background layer. Hit Command-J on my Mac. Don't forget that. Go here, and we'll find the people. And you'll see it will find those people in the background well, pretty well. Now, again, I can modify it. Like, I could come in here with a plus brush and add to it. I'm just going to add this person here with the wheelchair and that. So we're going to do that. But one thing I want to show you, with any of the generative functions in Photoshop, you'll find that they have a problem with words and letters. Notice that there's a person behind the James in the James S. McCon McDonald space hanger. It's going to remove that person in their shadow. You can see it selected it fine, but it's going to mess up the lettering J-A-M-E-S. Watch, I'm going to click the check mark. So it's going to remove all those people pretty well. I mean, it found most of the people in the background, I think. 
Maybe it missed a guy over here. But overall, it did okay. And I added this person here, these two people here. So that's fine. But really, with this generative AI, hopefully this is something that gets improved soon. Because you can see how it just totally mangles the lettering. Uh, again, this isn't like regular generative AI in Photoshop where it gives you three variations. This is what I get. And it messed up over here too, where it said space hanger. So that's all messed up. If I zoom in, I'm sure I could find problems in the background as well. There is a person still there and a person there. It looks like there's probably a mess over here. And of course, it didn't touch any of the people in the foreground. Let's go to another image. I have this image. This is Ohio State University. I'm not sure what I was doing here and why I took this picture. Um, but let's just say I want to remove the people. So we'll go here to, we'll duplicate the background layer. I keep forgetting. No, no. So we'll duplicate, hit Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC, go to Find Distractions, People. Now, this it will do pretty well. We'll find the people, but we got all those like guardrails and things, and those are kind of complex structures. I think it's going to have a difficult time, like really getting rid of the people and trying to make it look natural, like these guardrails are like look right so we'll click check mark and let it do its thing and um i think at first blush i tried this like two times prior to this video and at first blush it actually looks pretty good but if you zoom in you'll find a lot of flaws and a lot of flaws are going to be difficult to fix even with the clone stamp tool or the healing tool or whatever so it actually looks it actually at first blush right looks pretty good but if we zoom in and we go down here, we kind of zoom over here. Um, you can see it kind of looks weird in here. It looks like we're missing part of this guardrail. It kind of like melded it with this like security bars on that window, right? And kind of in here looks all kind of like the whole bottom of this guardrail is missing. So you can see how it, it can't handle something complex like this. So even a clone stamp tool would be difficult to do this, uh, to get rid of this or to fix it. So, it, you know, it, it's still not ready for prime time as far as that is concerned. You could see how that isn't good. But I mean, if you have, let's say, you know, a, a famous structure like Notre Dame or something, and there's no guardrails there, and there's like, you know, some people mingling in the front, it probably would do a pretty good job if, if what is behind them isn't that com complex. So let's go to one more image, all right? This is Ford's Theater in Washington. This is, of course, where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. He was sitting in this booth right here. And um, I'd like to remove all these people. All right, so we're going to duplicate the background layer. Hit Command-J. We're going to go up here to Find Distractions. We're going to go to People. Now, somehow it's going to determine that some people are subjects and some people aren't subjects of the photo. And you can see that it says this person, this person, these two people, these two people. And this two people over here are all subjects or all distractions and going to get rid of those. But it didn't select these four people here. And it selected like a fire extinguisher over here. So we need to modify this. We're going to get the minus first and we'll get rid of that because that's not a person. That's a fire extinguisher. All right. Then we're going to get the plus and we're going to add people to it. Now, what you want to do is try to not go outside the lines too much uh, so that it's only working on the person and not like the chairs, you know, the stage and behind them and stuff. So try to be as precise as possible. And you don't have to do this all in one false swoop. You could like let go of your left mouse button and restart. Right. I'll come over here, but I'm doing it all in one false swoop because I live dangerously. We'll come down here, get these two people here, get her leg there. Okay. All right. I think I got all the people in the shot, and we're going to click the little check mark. And I've tried this a couple different times, and sometimes it works okay, but there's like some, like her bag one time was still in the shot. I don't know why I didn't remove her bag, even though I had it painted. Um, there was. Like I missed part here, I think. But anyway, we'll see what what it does. And 
sometimes like it's got to recreate the hand, the armrests of the chairs. And sometimes those were a little funky and you could see it did okay. I mean, it did okay. So this, I think the remove people part of this remove distractions tool, I think needs some more work. And as far as the wires and cables, I think that works really well. It's just slow. So hopefully if they could make the wires and cables faster and they make the people removal a little more precise, then I think it's really something that works well. Now, if we zoom in, you can see there's a mess over here. So I'll hit command plus on my Mac a couple times. It's control plus on a PC. If you hold in the space bar, you get a little hand tool and you can drag over this way. You can see how there's this ghosting over here. Uh, like there's this weird stuff here. Uh, the handles, eh, the armrest, I should say, that one's messed up. These ones over here are all messed up. So it needs some more work. Uh, not quite ready for prime time. That's why it is in the beta version of Photoshop. But um, overall, I wanted to give you a glimpse of it and what you could do with it. Now, again, at the top, I mentioned that if you're not familiar with the beta version of Photoshop, if you do have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could download it for free and try it out. I recommend, though, that you don't use it exclusively because there's often things in the current version of Photoshop that work perfectly, but in the beta version of Photoshop, they won't work at all, even though they've been in Photoshop like forever. It's just for some reason, I don't know why it is, but it is that way. Now to download it, what you need to do is open up your Creative Cloud app. When you open up your Creative Cloud app, you'll be in this home tab. What you need to do is go to the apps tab. And then at the top, you'll have a bunch of different categories. Go to this little right arrow. You may have to go to this right arrow. It depends on the resolution of your monitor. Uh, but when you do, look for this, beta. Click on that. And then you'll have all these different beta apps that you could download and install. You can see I already have the Photoshop beta installed. But I could do After Effects, Premiere Rush, a bunch of them here. I don't know if this depends on what you subscribe to. Uh, like I subscribe to everything. So maybe they're all accessible by me. I'm not sure. If you just have the photography package, uh, meaning you get Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, whether you, these other like Illustrator beta would be available to you. But anyway, uh, you should have Photoshop beta available to you and there'll be an install button and you can install it from there. So that's it for this video. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.